What's up everybody and welcome back to our 10 OP builds super video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we're dropping our 10 of the most insane if not the best builds up to date and we really like the Triforce theme so without even wasting a single second let's just get right into it. First an urban legend has made a comeback. ADTF for the mid lane. In the past, a lovely European player called Jebsu popularized his off-meta approach to TF, but the build became unplayable due to some item changes. But now it's a lot more playable with the newly adjusted items. Starting off with Cole for the better income and going for items such as Trinity Force, Rapid Fire Cannon, Static Shiv, Wits End, and Kraken Slayer really adds an unbelievable level of power. Most of the player base thinks TF as a utility mage and maybe adds some burst damage to the mix while terrorizing the map with his ultimate ability. However, this approach is more about constant DP and consecutive playmaking while focusing on a heavy economical advantage. The rune set also puts emphasis on this one, as you want to go for first strike, magical footwear, minion dematerializer to get rid of some cannons for specific roaming timers, cosmic insight, conditioning, and overgrowth with one attack speed, one adaptive, and one defensive shard. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? Or sought help from impatient friends? Or browsed desperately for answers that only bring up more questions? Your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Our next build fixed one of the lowest win rate champions and turned her into one of the most broken beings on the current patch. Kindred Jungle is back and Kindred loves Trinity Force. Alongside this lovely item, she wants to be a mobile turret by putting emphasis on itemizing rather tanky compared to her previous full crit build. Start with Green Smite into Trinity Force, Wits End, Black Cleaver, Seraph's Cage, and Titanic Hydra. You're technically scaling infinitely with the Mark passive and you feature high damage in most situations. In the past, you were gated off by the chance of being bursted down before you can even press Lamb's Respite. But with this, impossible. For runes, you want to run Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Eyeball Collection, and Ingenious Hunter paired with one attack speed, one adaptive, and one armor shard. Oh well, time for another world that is enjoying the benefits of Trinity Force, and it's the ADC world this time. The Sewer Rat is an absolute firm believer when it comes to the Church of Triforce, but compared to the other champions that he approaches, it's slightly different. Start off with a Longsword and Pots, which you can then build into Blade of the Ruin King. Afterwards, you want to get your Trinity Force, Ruinan's Hurricane, and then it's time for the situational items such as Lord Dominic's Regards and Kraken Slayer. Alternatively, you can also invest into a more tanky approach with Titanic Hydra to avoid being bursted. For Ruins, you want to take Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, or Cutdown, paired with Taste of Blood and Ultimate Hunter. Just be certain to pick up one Attack Speed, one Adaptive, and one Armor Shard as well. With a few of the Trinity Force criminals being behind bars, let's tackle another champion that's been struggling before. Belle, that didn't take the initial item rework well, and it's time for some people to approach her a new way. We've teased it before, and at this point in time, we can confidently say that Stridebreaker Belle Veth slaps. Literally. Here's how you do it. Start off with a blue jungle item and then rush Kraken Slayer and then build into Stridebreaker. After this, you want to focus on a tankier itemization. Dead Stance, Guardian Angel, and Randuins are all solid options depending on the comp that you're facing. For runes, you want Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, and one Attack Speed, one Adaptive, and one Armor Shard. This build is quite different compared to the past builds, but it deals a lot with their issues of the item rework. Give her another shot and let us know how it went in the comment section below. Our next champion is quite the feared one, both on your team and on the enemy team. And I'm talking about the Echoes of Hylia support, Ash. If this champion is ahead, it's unbelievably overbearing to face. The healing and bonus damage output through Fond of Life and Echoes of Hylia is just so powerful that you can barely fight back. Next to this, you also have the issue of her proactive playmaking capabilities, which are entirely focused on her ultimate ability. This alone can change the tide of the game entirely, even when you're behind. However, the only thing that puts her even a little bit behind other champions are far more proactive ones such as Nautilus. Being able to just dive rather than just bullying them is easier and far more intuitive to play around. However, here's how you do the Ash build correctly. Run Comet, Mana Flow, Transcendence, Scorch, Fawn of Life, and Revitalize with two Adaptive and one Armor Shard. Start with Spectral Sickle and then rush Echoes of Hylia as fast as possible. This is your build enabling item and your most powerful spike. Afterwards, get your ability Haste Boots, Mandate, Ardent, and any supportive items that you see fit. Staff of Flowing Water, Axiom Mark, Blood Cleaver, or an anti-healing item in the form of Kempunk Chainsword are all solid options. 
Another champion who's dipping into the same item as Belveth is actually Rek'Sai. She just loves the Stride Breaker and goes for a heavy bruiser approach rather than a super old Prowler's Claw or Yuma's Ghostblade Assassin identity. Let's talk about her runes first. You want Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Coup de Grasse, Magical Footwear, Cosmic Insight, and Double Adaptive and one Health Shard. As mentioned before, you're no longer that one-shot wonder that dashes behind somebody to one-tap them. Now you're a fully-fledged bruiser that still one-taps people. Amazing, right? And if you want to turn into that, this is what you want to pick up. Get Blue Smite and Stride Breaker with a Black Cleaver, Death Stance, Guardian Angel, and a Situational Item. You could add a Seric's Gage, Anathema's Chains, and even an Abyssal Mask if you're and the enemy team feature high magic damage. All of these builds sound boring and just too normal so far, right? Well, they are OP, but we have something that surely isn't normal. However, still broken in its own very regard. Ivern Top. Yeah, you heard that right. Ivern Top and you'll be rushing Lich Bane. I know it sounds messed up, but hear me out. This champion deals a massive amount of damage and is an absolute lane bully that can enable your jungler on top of that. Quick side note here, in a meta where Rengar is powerful, having both on your team basically guarantees a free win. They can play with each other, that is. For items, you want Lich Bane, Boots of Lucidity, Night Harvester, and Rabbit on Seth Cap into Situational Item. If you can, you should always consider picking up a Dark Seal and get its upgrade as you reach 10 stacks. Other Situational Items could be Banshee's Veil or something like Cosmic Drive. For runes, you really want the following though. Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Bone Plating, Revitalize with 1 Ability Haste, 1 Adaptive, and 1 Health Shard. Enjoy some crazy tree action. Especially in team fights. this champion is gonna rock with some Night Harvester proccing on multiple people. Okay, now that we cover some exotic flora, let's talk about Trinity Force again. Oh yeah, I know. Trinity Force here, Trinity Force there. But it's just too darn broken, so here we go. Previously, we had Lethality Misfortune, but even here, we're transitioning into a Trinity Force build. For that, take Press the Attack, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline, Coup de Grasse, Magical Footwear, and Cookie Delivery with one Attack Speed, one Adaptive, and one Armor Shard. Okay, now that the runes are covered, let's go ahead and talk about this Demonic Champion. However, just to offer you the best of both worlds, how about shoving you both builds again? Or at least their core. For the Lethality one, you want Yumi's Ghostblade into Collector, and for the Trinity Force build, it's the following. Start with a longsword and three pots, then rush Trinity Force into Collector, complete your boots, and get Lord Dom to the Bloodthirster and then Kraken Slayer. Alternatively, you can also go for Trinity Force into Kraken Slayer and then exchange the last item for a situational one. Sounds good to you? And rack up some wins with this build. Next to this, I want to give you a build for a champion that hasn't really seen much screen time. Zillion has always been an annoying champion to face, and with this build, he's going to be an even bigger problem than before. Start with the tear and the rush rod of ages and turn into a living tank. Your entire purpose is offering zone control, dictating the pace of the fight, and then turning an enemy engage into a death trap. After your rod of ages, you want to get that archangel staff, cosmic drive, and then it's time for some supportive items. Your champion isn't really designed to be a full blown mage, so the void staff rabbit on combo isn't really required. For him, it's more about utility items in the form of mandate or staff, basically anything that provides something to his allies as well. Alternatively, you can be a bit more selfish and get a Zhonya to get yet another layer of defense next to your ultimate. To complete the build, you want the following runes. Airy, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Gathering Storm, Magical Footwear, Cookie Delivery, Double Adaptive Shards, and one Defensive Shard. Alright, it's time for our final build, and here we have another super high win rate culprit. Nico took the rift by storm, and she just does way too much damage. This build that we're going to be showcasing is about her mage-like identity. We're covering this and more in our Nico Master class, and you should definitely check it out if you want to become a Nico Master. Enough pretext, let's get into the build. Nico wants to run Comet, Mana Flow, Transcendence, Scorch, Cookie Delivery, and Cosmic Insight. It's all about poking the enemy out, and these runes provide her with the biggest possible laning power. Next to this, she desperately wants a following item. Start with the Doran's Ring and get your Hexic Rocket Belt as fast as you can. After that, bag the Sorcerer Boots and then Shadow Flame as well. This will complete the pen setup, and while you're at it, you might as well get a Dark Seal somewhere in your build just to get the chance of completing Medjaz. Your champion is basically busted, so you'll most likely farm a lot of stacks anyway. After that, pick up Zhonya's and Rabadon's and you are set. If you feel like you're not confident enough in your own abilities to run the Magi setup, then just substitute it with a Horizon Focus and all your worries are of the past. And with that, we conclude today's video. A massive amount of builds are ready for you to use and if you like this video, drop a like and a sub to the channel to not miss anything pro guides ever again. I'll see y'all in the next one, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.